Massive MIMO is a key technology in any mobile network operator's capacity toolkit. By using a large number of antennas, easily 64 transmit by 64 receive, combined with beam forming, a large amount of capacity can be deployed to an area with also significant coverage footprint as well making massive MIMO ideal for not only serving ultra-loaded, high-density urban environments, but also as a potential enabler for fixed wireless access broadband provision using 4 or 5G in more rural locations. Now, back in the April of this year, O2 acquired 40 MHz of 2300 MHz spectrum of Ofcom, the UK's communications regulator. Now this spectrum is unpaired and so is used for time division duplex and up to the point of O2 doing massive MIMO they had deployed the 2300 MHz with 2x2 or 4x4 MIMO. However, being time division duplex and having 40 MHz of it, it's really just asking for massive MIMO, especially with the huge amount of customers and market share that O2 has in the UK, especially when you include their virtual network operator customers. So today's video is going to be about their first massive MIMO installation near Marble Arch in London. The Nokia massive MIMO panel that O2 are using near Marble Arch is on the right of this image, with a more conventional passive 10 port conscope antenna being on the left of the image. Now this is the first Nokia Massive MIMO that we've seen in the UK and rather helpfully Nokia have printed their logo in big blue letters on the front of the panel. Another giveaway that it's time division duplex is that there's a little GPS receive antenna located on the top of the unit. The Massive MIMO panel is an AANA model number wise. This has 40 MHz of bandwidth, meaning it broadcasts both of O2's 2300 MHz 4G carriers, EAR FCNs 39250 and 39448. In addition, TDD configuration wise is actually quite similar to the non massive MIMO 2300 MHz deployment that O2 has. So TDD frame structure wise, they are using configuration two, which means that the frame is composed of six downlink subframes, two special subframes and two uplink subframes. Additionally, a number of other configuration values are the same. So they're using a five millisecond TDD config and SSP5. Interestingly, the transmission mode on the massive MIMO is TM8, which means that the user device can have two downlink streams from the massive MIMO panel, meaning higher performance for that user, but it does reduce the overall capacity of the massive MIMO system. Now, for those interested about the Comscope 10 poor passive antenna to the left of the massive MIMO unit, it did actually broadcast 2300 MHz with 44R using Nokia FZNJ RIUs prior to the massive MIMO panel being installed. And you can actually see the FZNJ RIU in this picture on the left with the kind of heat sinks. The panel continues to carry the fairly standard O2 FDD frequency still, so three sectors in total on the site of GUO9, of L08, and then L21 and L18 are dual beam on this panel, so the site has six sectors of L18 and L21. So in other words, it is a high capacity site, and you would very much expect that considering it's just got massive MIMO installed on it. The word is that another one of these massive MIMO panels will be installed near King's Cross soon. Now I don't think it will be intended to serve King's Cross specifically because that already has a distributed antenna system. 
However, St Pancras is very nearby and it does not. So it no doubt is in need of some significant additional capacity in lieu of all the commuters and people who go through that station, especially with it not having any form of distributed antenna system or small cells or anything inside it. Thanks for watching this video about the first O2 UK Nokia Massive MIMO installation. I hope to see many more of these in future and we'll be trying to see the one near King's Cross as soon as I can. Now in terms of just the recording of this video, I've never filmed in this room before so hopefully the video and sound will be okay and I hope to see you on the next video.